Okay, so we are continuing Comrade Vora, chapter 8, on um, the three, um, what, well, three spheros, Netzar, Hod, and Yesod. So just to review quickly, we understand that man is made of 10 spheros. Netzar and Hod and Yesod represents the two legs and the sexual organ. Um, that's the standard accepted opinion. That's the standard accepted opinion. And some people um, say different things about it, but that's the most standard accepted one. So we're gonna go with that one and you see how it actually uh, makes sense to to do it that way um make sure your microphone is off uh, for now and, um yeah just people are still coming in all right, please turn off your microphone until um, we, you, you want to ask a question. Thank you very much. Okay, so we were saying again that we are now describing the three spheres, Netzah, Hon, and Yesod, which correspond to the two legs and the sexual organ. And um, he's going to explain really how do we emulate Hashem in those three spherot. Um, while we're trying to understand Hashem acts in a certain way with this world, with certain energies, with those 10 spheros, so too we human beings have the 10 parts of our bodies that correspond to the 10 energies with which God created the world. And therefore we are, since we're made anyway in the image of God, purposely so that we can act towards the world with those 10 energies, just like God acted towards the world uh, with those 10 energies. So how do we do that? So how should a person, says the Ramak, how should a person train himself in the attributes of Nesar, Hod, and Yesod? In fact, the rectification of Nesar and Hod ha have some aspects in common and others that are unique to each of, of each of them. So they, they, they work together. Um, since they are like legs, like we saw, it's the two legs. Um, they correspond also, uh, says the, uh, well, the Arizal, and to Moshe and Aharon. We want to learn how to be Netzach. Moshe was Netzach, and Aaron represented Hod. Um, Yesod is Yosef Fatsadik. That's why sexual organ, that's why he's known for his thing. Netzach is victory, is eternity, consistency. Hod is more, um, here they translate it as, I don't, I don't even know if they translate it. Uh, Hod is more, um, we'll say like more glory. Um, it's something beautiful, something of it all has to do with hoda, gratitude, uh, being able to observe and see the beauty. Uh, our own, and that's the service of God. The service of God is having gratitude. Um, that's why Aaron Akoen is the ultimate service of God. Is being able to see everything that God does and emulating him, but being really grateful in seeing everything we have. That's Hod. And, um, and Yesod, Yesod is foundation, is Yosef at Sadiq, is being able to be a pillar of strength. That's why it's in the middle. Foundation not able, not falling prey to all the Ruchot, to all the winds, all the... Uh, challenges, temptation of this world, 
which uh, we know Yosef was able to withstand in Egypt, even though he was a very beautiful man. Uh, all the women were in after him and wanted to marry him. And he um, didn't fall one time and got married to um, Osnat. And um, yeah, he was very holy in the middle of Egypt. So without any further ado, let's continue the Romac. First of all, one should help students of the Torah and support them. Okay, so, well, I'll finish the sentence and then I'll explain. First of all, one should help students. So how do we do Netzah and Hod, the two legs? One should help students of the Torah and support them, whether with money or indeed providing them with the things they require, preparing their food, and carrying out their wishes so that they need not cease their Torah study, right? So, um, it's, it's, so, so, so you see, you have to feed me. <laughs> Just joking. But basically, the way it works is Torah Tiferet, right? Tiferet is the middle. Tiferet, as we saw, correspond to the Torah. And we have Netzach and Hod, so Tifer is the trunk of the body, and Netzach and Hod are the legs. So the legs carry, that's what supports the whole torso. And therefore, people who want to emulate Netzach and Hod, they have to become like legs that support Tifer, which is the Torah teacher. Um, because Tifer, as we saw, is, so, is connected to Torah. Um, so someone, someone who wants to emulate Hashem in its own hood is going to do everything he can so that the person who is teaching doesn't have to go out to work or, um, or, 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 or spend time doing other things than teaching. Obviously, we're speaking about real teachers of Torah. We know there are teachers of Torah that um, are not uh, authentic or they don't use their time in a precious way. Um, now, they, we know sometimes people go to Kolel or they choose to live a Kolel or Yeshiva life and uh, they're not uh, really using all their time properly. Um, many do, but not always. So we're talking when we want to support a Torah scholar or uh, someone who is in Kolel, we have to make sure that we know that that person is really not wasting his time, um, is appreciative, uh, in, you know, if he, especially if he's married, he's appreciative that the only reason he's able to learn is thanks to his wife, who allows him to, you know, go learn and uh, support him in that. But he understands that every second he spends Learning Torah is all thanks to his wife. So, um, so this 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 is um, Netzar and Hod, how to support the Torah, um, and and that's that's why the, uh, you have that uh, mitzvah of giving charity to um, to Ju uh, Jewish education center to yeshivot, so that they can continue to spread the Torah in the world. He should take care not to disparage their learning, um, lest they flag in their efforts to study. Um, he should praise their good deeds so that they gain strength in their service. And he should, he should provide them with the books they need, a house of study and so forth. So whatever we can do to support the first, the teacher of Torah, um, so that they can teach as much as possible and spread as much Torah as possible. So even if one doesn't have money, it, it, you know, it, it doesn't have to be with money. It can be with whatever he needs, like we, can, like we said, books or, or a place to teach or to study and whatever. Anybody can do it in his own unique way. Anything that strengthens and supports those who toil in Torah derives from these two attributes. Each person, each person, and that's why it refers to Moshe and Aaron, because Moshe and Aaron 
were the two who told the Torah at Har Sinai and during the 40 days of the desert. Those are, those are two attributes. Moshe Aaron were the two legs. Um, and we got the Torah from them, the teaching. Each person should contribute whatever he can, however little or much. As we know, in Judaism, it's not the quantity that counts, it's the quality with what we do. Um, ultimately, whatever person can do to honor the Torah and strengthen its observance, whether verbally, physically, or financially, arousing people's heart to Torah and inspiring them to hold fast to it, is rooted in these two spheres, which are called those who are there to it and support it. So or anybody who doing kiruv or, or who, who, who is sharing with others pamphlet or, or, or Torah words, um, or it's, you know, inspiring the community to learn more and grow more and become more connected to Hashem, all those people connect to, um, to, to the power of Netzach and Hod and emulate Hashem that way. Furthermore, he who toils in Torah study must learn from every person. So that's a very, very important thing because there's a lot of teachers of Torah who I'm gonna learn just from one rabbi, just from one rabbi, just from one uh, group or type of Jews. No. A real, do you know, we know that from Pirkei Avos, right? Pirkei Avos says, uh, who, who is wise? The ones who, who learn from Kol Adam, the men who, who learn from everyone, that's a wise person. And even more so, that's in Torah. It's not just being wise, but to be a true Torah um, Jew, he needs to be, it doesn't mean he has to accept everything. He needs to learn from someone, especially as a Jew, we understand the reason it says there are 600,000 explanations, the Arizal says that, there's 613,000 explanation to every uh, word in the Torah is because there are 600,000 Jewish neshamos, roots neshamos. And therefore, each one of us has the unique truth of the Torah, has a unique um, teaching and perspective on the Torah that he has to give, that is part of the whole. Um, and, and is necessary for the Torah to be complete. Now, you see, we're not talking about a uh, false Torah. We're not talking about something that contradicts halakha or things that it goes against. But we're talking about different perspectives. Some people, for example, are going to say to pray, you should sing more. Some people say to pray, you should be more quiet, to be more focused on your emotions. Some say it will be, should be, no, you should. Um, you should shake more, so to, to make your neshama shake and to, or to dance. And you use be, be, um, uh, with all my limbs, I serve Hashem, right? So we have to understand that even people we disagree with, uh, in terms of hashkafa, way of serving God, that's okay. But we still have to learn something from them. Every, what is his uniqueness? What he has to teach about um, understanding Hashem and, and serving God and, and the Torah. Um, so what, one has to be humble enough to do that. Otherwise, he's cutting off Jews or, for, or the, the parts of the Torah from the Torah knowledge. And by the way, that's what happened with the 24,000 students of Rabbi Akiva. And what we had all through our summer was because of that. They, weren't, they didn't fulfill this, this specific uh, requirement. There was a lack of kavod. A lot of kavod at Torah, a lot of kavod of chachamim. And someone who lacks kavod to chachamim is chayv misa, and they will die. Um, as it is written, from all my teachers, I have gained wisdom. Even from Achitofel, who, you know, who went against him, it was his teacher, and even from him, he learned. So for complete Torah knowledge, listen to that, complete Torah knowledge 
is not gained from a single teacher. If you just take one Rebbe or one Rabbi or one spiritual leader or one whatever, it's not, it's dangerous because you think just one way. All the great Gedolim, all the great Gedolim have learned from everyone and they, they will not just, you need to have your ready, your own spiritual guide, your own mashpia, your own uh, guide who knows you and he can direct you halachically on where to go. But that's more on the halachic level and for, 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 for you or the main way you're going to serve God um, and and your own guidance, actually a real rabbi is not going to tell you this is how you should serve God. He tells you the different ways and guides you to find your own unique way to serve God, what's best to your neshama, al pidarko. Um, but he encourages you to learn from everyone and, and uh, not just from, from, from his, his rabbi, right? Not just from the rabbi itself, from everyone. Um, and, and sometimes it means going out, out of a comfort zone to learn different perspectives and try to understand what the, underst the other one is seeing. You can only go in a true argument with someone when you're able to see the other one's perspective and why he's arguing like that, what his logic is. This is what the Gemara is for. If you don't, if you're not able to view the other one's perspective, you're not being fair to the argument, you, you are just seeing your point and you're, you're not listening to the other. Very important in a marriage. <laughs> in a marriage, we have to make sure, understand what my wife is feeling, understand what she's saying. Then the husband, then I can also bring my argument or my point. And then when I have both sides, then we, you know, we can understand each other and, make, and take a decision together what's the right, the ideal way to go. So, um, thus, by learning from everyone, a person becomes worthy of being a vehicle for Netzach and Hod, which are the students of the Lord, and one who teaches Torah is on the level of Tiferes. So the, 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 the Rebbe, the, the Mashpia, is Tiferes, and he's sending and he's teaching to, um, to everyone when he's able to do that, Netzach Hod. Let's remember Netzach Hod, also the spheros for Nevuah. The, 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 that, that's, that's the two spheros used to, some, um, to, to, to achieve true nevoah, and that's why Moshe and Aaron, right, were the prophets par excellence, the, the, they were the highest prophets, and they represent those two spheros. So why I'm saying that? Because we understand that true Torah comes from, it, it's a type of Ruach HaKodesh. I'm learning Torah, right? To Torah is not an intellectual pursuit. It's not based on your IQ. You don't understand Torah just because of your intellectual uh, 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 genius. No. Um, you understand Torah based on what Hashem allows you to understand and based on how much effort you have made, how much you have wanted, desired, craved, and asked and davened to understand what the Pshad is, what the Torah means when it says that, what the Gemara means, what the Zohar means, the more, the more Hashem will allow you to understand it on the level that is suited for you and on the level that you deserve based on, how, on the effort. The more you, 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 you work hard on understanding something, the more Hashem will give you clarity about it. So but we understand that it's a download a download and 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 it's a gift torah is a gift that you're given um that's why a torah scholar can never pride himself in the torah he teaches he can pride himself in the effort that he has made to learn but someone who uh, who, who 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 is arrogant and goes out and says yeah i'm a genius i'm a big time in chacham someone who goes out like that that's very dangerous it's it's it's, it's gaiva and he, especially if he starts thinking that he's superior to others because of his knowledge of torah he's going to lose all his torah he's, 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 he's that that person is in danger the more 
a great of a Torah scholar one is, the more humble he has to become. Because otherwise he's going to lose all his wisdom um, because it becomes Torah Shel Olishma. And Shorah Torah Shel Olishma says the Gemara is Sam Maves. It's a poison of death because it nourishes your Yetzirah. And that, that's, so it's going to kill you. Um, so the more one becomes of a big rabbi, so to speak, or a big teacher, a big guide, a big, a popular, the more he has to be humble and the more he has to run away from honor and high position and, and, and humble himself, understanding that he's not better than anyone else. Therefore, so that's someone who will teach the level on level of Tiferet. And that's harmony. Tiferet brings harmony and brings harmony into the world. Therefore, when a man sits and learns in his merit, Tiferet flows into Nesar and Hod, and he actually attains their level. So, they, 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 so he does it the right way, and like Aaron and Moshe did, and they became prophets. Um, now, when a person learns scripture, not that they become prophets because of their learn, they thought they became prophets because of their attachment to Hashem, but they were able to give that energy on its own hold by, um, by, by learning, by teaching, and uh, respecting everyone, and teaching to everyone, and learning from everyone. Now, when a person learns scripture, which comes from the right. He has a specific association with Netzach. And when he learns Mishnah, which comes from the left, he has a specific association with Hod. So we have to understand that even our Torah, there are different parts of the Torah. We have uh, Tanakh, then we have Mishnah, and then we have Talmud. Um, so one is more Torah Shebichtav, right? Scripture correspond more to the right, to Chesed. It's much more, it's much sweeter in a way um, uh, on the Pshat level to just to learn beautiful story. It's inspiring um, and it, it, it doesn't require as much um, work and effort, at least in appearance. Uh, because it goes very deep, but in terms of understanding what Hashem wants and the halacha and all that, the the Mishnah. So that corresponds to the right Netzach. Mishnah uh, um, is is uh, the left. Well, we're speaking about the right side and the left side, right? Netzach is the right, and and Hod is the left. So Chesed and Gvura, uh, Chesed and Rachamim. Uh, chesed, sorry, and Din. So Mishnah is a left. Um, it's the more female aspect of the Torah. In the Torah Shebir is the more male aspect of Torah. That's why women learn more Tanakh, which is more male, and the men learn more Mishnah, which is more female. Um, because we have to be able to join the two. So we, you, you, you study also the other side of you. You have to go to the other side to become one with it. Um, but, and, and so that's why the Mishnah is much more uh, focused on laws because it has to do with the left side, which all about limit, um, direction, structure. But Talmud includes everything. For it cites proofs for the laws of the Mishnah from scripture, therefore completing them both. So that's why the yeshiva world has, uh, well, spends most of his time, has decided to learn mostly Talmud because the Talmud is kind of the combination of both. The Talmud is the unification of the right and the left of the male and the female energy. And it becomes one in the middle. And so it becomes like Yesod, right? Um, the, 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 the pillar of, of strength. Now, the... the, the the, de the problem, the danger, the, de the danger of, um, not the danger, the problem that we have today, a lot of people learn Talmud and just Talmud. The Baal Shem Tov in Sabbat Arivash is very strong on that. He say, be careful, be very careful 
not to spend your whole time just learning the Talmud and all its commentaries and not learn Halakha and, uh, and Musa and Ashkafa on, on practical things on how to go, become a better person to come close to God. This is a, a, a thing of the Yetzirah, of the Satan. So we have to be very careful. A lot of people, they just learn just Talmud, Talmud, Talmud. It's, it's very nice and you get credit for it and it, it's Torah and it's beautiful. However, if you learn a Talmud that doesn't lead you to practical application of the halakha in understanding how to live as a Jew in this world, in, right, then it's, it's like you're only doing theory. You're only doing pupil. The, the Mesilla Sishayim, the Rambach was very strong on that. He wrote the Mesilla Sishayim because of that. Be careful not just to become an intellectual. If you're just an intellectual, you're never going to become a, a, a real man who needs to unite heaven and earth, male, female, intellectual, and emotional. So um, someone who learns mostly Talmud, he needs to make sure that when he learns Talmud, he goes back into the root to the Tanakh, when the, ta the Talmud, as I learned from my Rebbe, when you have a quote in the Talmud of a, of a Pasuk from Tanakh, go in the Tanakh, read the context, understand what the Pasuk says. Then you go to the Mishnah and you learn what the Mishnah is saying about that Pasuk. And then, you know, you go to the Pilpulim and the decision of the Alakha. So that, that's, that's really the ideal way to learn. Let's remember that in the past, well, in time of Pekiavos, at least it was advised, you don't start the Talmud learning uh, Talmud before you have mastered Tanakh and Mishnah. Uh, if I can remember correctly, the Mishnah said you had to be 15 years old before you start Talmud. Now, today they start Talmud at eight, nine years old. And it's a problem. It's a big problem and it, 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 it uh, affects a lot of. Um, yeah, I have a lot of, of, of kids who are not able to get excited about the, the Talmud learning because it became too dry and it's uh, disconnected from practical application and, um, and from the Tanakh itself. So, um, how should a person train himself in the attribute of Yesod? Okay, so Yesod now has to do with the sexual uh, energy um, to Yosef at Sadiq. To avoid, so, um, to avoid wasteful emissions, so that concerned mostly uh, men, obviously, he must be extremely careful of the kind of speech that leads to licentious thoughts. So, very interesting. Here, we know actually that there's two bris. There's a bris Lashon, bris Lashon, and a bris Mila. Those two parts, the, 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 the mouth and the sexual organs, are both places we know that we connect to some a man or woman when they kiss. So it's, it is the place of connection on the head, right? The, if I can um, describe properly, the sexual organ in the head is the mouth and the sexual organ of the body is the, the sexual organ. So the idea is that that um, the head it represents more the spiritual part of man and the body the more physical part of man so if one speak or use his mouth in a negative way by speaking uh dirty never pay uh, by, by 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 well the way people speak today in the in the, in the, in the non uh, refined world out there in the secular world uh, the more someone is negative and dirty with his mouth, the more you will know that on the sexual level, he's dirty. The more someone is clean with his speech, with his songs, with his uh, communication, the more his jokes, the more he's, you know, he's clean in the, the, the sexual area of his life. So, um, and, one, and, and vice versa, the more someone is not using his sexual energy properly, the more he is going to be prone to speak um, in, a, in an unrefined way. So, needless to say, he should not use foul language. 
he should even be on his guard against pure speech that leads to licentious thoughts. This idea can be derived from an examination of the verse, do not allow your mouth to bring sin to your flesh. That's, that's what it meant. That is, do not let your mouth utter words that bring holy flesh, which is the sign of the covenant, to wasteful emission. The verse co continues, why should God be angry because of your voice? So if this voice refers to obscenities, why is the expression to bring sin used in the first part of the verse? Uttering obscenities is itself a sin. Rather, even if the words themselves are not sinful, but pure, if they give rise to licentious thoughts, he must be on his guard against them. For this reason, the verse uses the expression to bring sin. Why should God be angry? Uh, for since these words to bring sin, uh, since these words to bring sin, even though they themselves are permissible, because they're not, you know, doing something, uh, saying something necessarily forbidden, God is angry with the voice that utters them. For the resulting evil act reverts to the voice and words that caused it. And, and by the way, I think this is connected to what we call call isha. Why a man cannot listen to a woman's singing. It's because, and, and this refers specifically to music, especially Gaussian music, secular music. Um, because most of the song are, in, in today's world has to do with, um, with love. 99% of the, of, of the song is about, is about love. And therefore, um, if one listens to someone sing of, about those things and it doesn't come from a pure place and the words are not pure, then, it's, then it can uh, affect the person in a negative way and start having sexual fantasies and desires. Um, and that's why, according to Alaha, technically, I mean, there, there were some post him who have said that if you are in an environment, and I, I know there were great rabbis who did that at their own table with their uh, son and daughters, they wouldn't do that in public. But in their own home, they would have their daughters and son all sing together at the Shabbos table. It is a psak halacha I have here, I forgot the, the name. Um, um, but basically, it's from uh, Rabbi uh, Gitzel Elinson, the way the way the, the guide to the rabbi, sorry the gab the rabbinic guide to um, so Jewish book for, on for women, the modest way and whatever. So in there is a psak from the rabbis that it's we don't if a man if a man and woman sing together. Um, words of Torah, meaning, let's say, saying Hallel, they, they're together, but they're singing something holy for the purpose of connecting to Hashem. One is not um, suspecting that they will get uh, negative, um, dirty thoughts because of that, and therefore it's allowed. Now, not everybody passing like that, obviously, but um, we know that the the, the main avera is to listen to one woman sing on her on her own. A man can live, right? So that does thing. But there are many different post game, different uh, um, laws and degrees of 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 strictness. But the the most lenient um, would say that you can listen only if it's in the context of something spiritual and holy, because then since you the the breeze of the lashon is not corrupted it's not with negative intention i think then something you want it won't affect your breeze uh mila or sexual organ this is the extent to which one must be careful obviously i'm not giving up sack i'm just explaining the what exists what's out there to understand better 
This is the extent to which one must be careful regarding the sign of the covenant, entertaining no licentious thoughts, lest he causes he causes destruction. Yes, when we have negative thoughts, our thoughts are very powerful. Our action, our emotions, our speech, our thoughts all have an impact on the world. People don't realize that we are wired to the world. We are all interconnected. String theory. We, everything we do, think, speak, uh, it is has a butterfly effect into the entire world. The more holy one is, the more destructive or constructive uh, uh, it, 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 it will have. It will impact the world. But so we have we have to be very careful. Understand that we are very powerful, and everything we do matters no matter how simple of a human being you are you're a human being you have a soul in you everything you do has an impact and the more holy you become the more sorry impact that's why adam and eve who were the holiest of all people on earth um when they sinned, the entire world was shaken up so that's why we're still trying to repair some of what they have um, destroyed when they made the choice of eating from Sadas. So we see how how powerful uh, everything can change, how powerful we are as human beings. Further care is necessary since Yesod also corresponds to the covenant of the rainbow, which is which is arced above only to shoot arrow, uh, arrows to the attribute of Malthus the target of the arrows. So Malchus represents more the female sexual energy. Um, and Yesod corresponds to the rainbow because the rainbow has seven colors. So if you take um, so you take the seven lower spheres, right? Like that from the, that's corresponds to the seven spheres. So Yeso takes all six and connect it to Malchus, which is a total of seven. Therefore, it's it's the it's the Yesod's job to create the connection between all that. Um, and when it's all connected and in harmony, then you have the rainbow. We have the beauty, unity of all the colors together which enables us to see the extent of the light, that all that comes from one source. Um, so that's a, one of the reasons it's connected to the rainbow. There are many reasons, obviously. This refers to guarding the seminal drop, which shoots forth like an arrow to produce branches and bear fruit. Just as the bow, the bow in the high world is never drawn except when aimed at the aforementioned target. A man should not draw his bow, that is, cause himself in may, any way to have an erection unless it is directed towards the proper target, his wife, when she's in a state of purity at the time of union. Hashem decides to make love, so to speak, to connect to us human being at the right time, at the right place, in the holy place. Um, and only when we're pure, when we're ready, we are represents Hashem's woman. So just to give, to, to give an example, we have the seven weeks of Sphira Saomer. So the Zohar said the seven weeks of Sphira Saomer correspond to the seven days that a woman is Nida. So we had to prepare ourselves seven weeks, just like a woman prepare herself seven days. And that's why we count during, the, the woman counts during this, those seven days, and to have the seven white or clean days. And men also have to count. Today, women also count for men, except for him, but um, different opinions. But the man has the responsibility to count those seven weeks and then finally, Shavuos, the man goes to the mikveh, and then he goes daven, and that's like the wedding. Uh, Shavuos, that's why we cannot be for our spouses. We are with Hashem. Um, 
obviously it, everything is not to be taken literally everything is a metaphor everything is to understand that we can be close to Hashem just like we're close to our spouse and that is a real relationship it's not just commandment and uh, servitude that's not what it's about it's about achieving tremendous love um, and 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 Ha having a pure love. So Hashem will choose the Jewish nation. He will choose his wife, so to speak. He's his, and then he will give love to everyone. But he has that, like he has a wife, and then he has the, um, how we say, uh, just like, um, uh, not right, surrogate. I don't know how, how best to describe that. It's like you have Rachel and Leah, right? So you, you have the Jewish people and, uh, who is the primary wife and then the secondary wife, so to speak. Uh, different way to explain it and to understand it, but we Jewish people, we, we had the home, we had the Besamikdash, and we, we um, tried to be pure to serve God, but we got, we got Tame and, and, and uh, we got kicked out of the house, so to speak. So right now we're sleeping on the couch or in, on the bench outside in Galus in America and we are getting cold and it's time to go back home to rebuild, to reconnect, to love again, to do tshuva, to go back to Israel and, and to be one with God again. He should never go beyond this limit lest the attribute of Yesod become flowed, God forbid. This requires great care, mainly in guarding himself from licentious thoughts. So this is mostly a, a, a teaching and a lesson for, I mean, a warning for men who, who, uh, who are today in the world where it's very difficult, but it's also a warning for women to, uh, for wives especially, for women to be careful not to be playful with with men in that area but more than that to to support the women who are married to support their husband um in 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 the, uh, in that fight by being very sexually active with the husband unfortunately you know i'm a marriage coach and a social worker and i counsel a lot of couples and most couples don't have enough intimacy intimacy is rare nowadays between couples and it needs it, it it's dangerous when it's rare because then men and even sometimes women be it or not go on a, a porn website or looking for the place you know pleasure somewhere else or on their own and that's that's destructive it's it's very hard um so also a lot in the, in the from world the religious world uh, because we're taught of how destructive this you know uh, sin is you know, to to be wa wasteful um uh, most of our, of the kids feel terribly guilty and a lot of them right they, they, they're, they're told in yeshiva you're not if you do this you're gonna go to hell there's a lot of demons that come from the sea that you know it's, it's the worst uh, sin and a lot of boys since they're not necessarily told really how to deal with it how to grow from it how to um control the yetzer they they are just told not to do it this uh, doesn't always help and uh, and there's almost no man that has not fall into well, actually the Gemara said there's no man that hasn't fall into that Yosef Atzadik was, was one of the only one and 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 therefore they need a lot of support they need the father to speak to them say don't worry it's okay we all make mistakes but those you need to do to do tshuva it's it's it, you, you need to learn how to think better God still loves you you can fix those mistakes. It's important for the father or the mother. Uh, it's harder sometimes for mother to speak about that, but 
we have to really um, support our kids in that because they, our boys, uh, they need a lot of reassuring that they're not evil and they're good boys, even though they have watched or wasted seed. It's very important for mothers to to be conscious of that and uh, and, and and fathers. Uh, I mean, it's a, it's a discussion you should have with your husband to make sure that he spoke to the to the son about it, and um, and or, or to find the right rabbi who is knowledgeable enough and careful enough not to scare the kids. Um, someone who is balanced, you know, a rabbi therapist or rabbi social worker, I guess, always ideal, who is trained in teaching the kids on how to um, approach this sensitive area because the whole world is suffering from that. The reason the whole world suffers from that is because we're coming to the end of time. And the first scene, we know the first scene, where did Nida even come from? Where, where did sexual problem come from? It came from Adam and Eve um, not having proper intimacy in Ganet and it says in Kabbalah and the Midrashim and um, having intimacy and Eve having intimacy with a snake, whatever that means, don't take it literally, but we understand that there was a corruption in the sexual intimacy, which means that there was a corruption, a defect in the way we communicated with each other as men and women, the way we respected and gave pleasure to each other. There was something selfish in it. There was a lack of appreciation for the other. We, we, and, and since that was one of the, main, the first, if not the first real main problem that existed in creation, so why now we are coming to the end of time where we are dealing directly with all those issues and only someone who truly works on relationship and learning how to respect the other and communicate properly um, and having true intimacy, only those one will be able to really, you know, survive this uh, challenging generation and bring rectification to the world and to the first scene. So, everything that happens at the end is to be able to. Um, to fix the beginning, the first thought, the first uh, 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 moments in creation. So this is one of the reasons why we struggle so much today with that. Um, but it's um, that's what we're here for. We're here to work on our character traits. The Vinagaon, you know, I said, you are created only to fix your character traits. That's why I created it. Not to make money, not to make babies, not to whatever you think. You're here to work on yourself. Therefore, your whole life is a war on all your character traits. And every day you're gonna be challenged by different thoughts and desires and temptations and, and um, you know, sadness and depression and anger and loneliness and uh, pleasures and white national speech. So all those things, are here to challenge us um, to grow. Now, don't be scared if you feel you are evil because you know you have so many bad thoughts or so many bad character traits. Well, guess what? The stronger your soul is, the greater your soul is, the more you yet Sarah, your evil inclination is gonna be. So in a way, it's a good sign that you have a powerful it's not a good sign if you just you know, do it, <laughs> but don't feel low about yourself from the fact that uh, why am I thinking always about that? Why I'm always tempted with this or with that? Why I'm addicted to this or that? We have strong Yetzara, and this is here because like a coach who knows you can do it, he's going to push harder and harder those who are the most capable of, who have the most potential. Same thing, Hashem is going to push us by using the Yetzera and they push us to the extreme. As we know with Eov, as we know with Rabbi Akiva, that, that, the, that the Satan dressed up in a girl 
drug IQ, I say, I will never seen, uh, I, will, I will not seen, and then say, oh yeah, let's see. And well, I forgot the exact lashon of the Gemara, but he kind of made a statement uh, that was a bit uh, perhaps arrogant on his level. And uh, the Satan dressed in a, as a beautiful girl, and he started running after the girl, right? It's two stories that Raikiva right? and someone else, I forgot uh, who was the other one, but running after girls, big gadol in Raikiva level, because yeah, he has a huge soul and therefore he needs a huge um, Havrusa, <laughs> a huge um, partner to fight him and to challenge him to grow. That's how we grow. Um, so it's only good news at the end. Everything that happens in our life, it's an opportunity to become greater and stronger. So this is um, the end of chapter nine or uh, eight. And next time we will finish with chapter nine. Malchus uh, actually will try. Actually, there is chapter 10 also. The nine is actually pretty long. We'll see. But um, Malchus is pretty incredible also. Um, it relates a lot to women and all that. So thank you everybody for coming. And um, anybody has any questions? No? Okay. Baal Hashem was clear enough, hopefully. Hope you understood. So thank you everyone for coming, listening, and, um, and learning with me. All the best.